okay so uh, mostly in the examination you'll be given questions of this kind right so you'll be given a series and you'll be asked to find whether it is convergent or divergent so let us spend some time on these kind of questions and uh, you know these are all some random questions depending on the nature of the series you need to choose a, uh, an appropriate method so if let us first recall what methods we have and then uh, on what basis we can select a particular uh, method right let me just go ahead let me spend few minutes on that and then uh, i'll also communicate to you see when you are given a series when you are given a series the first and foremost thing every everybody should observe is whether the given series is uh, i mean it's a series of positive terms or an alternate series right the first point is uh, first point to be observed is whether the given series is positive term series or an alternate series you need to just observe this first in case if you observe that as what you call a positive term series when it is a positive term series we have three options exactly you can solve uh, the problem i mean you can evaluate the convergence of the series by using what you call comparison test if not that you see we can use what you call ratio test dl lambert's ratio test if not this you see we can also use what you call nth root test in these three possible ways you can find out the uh, you know con convergence of the given positive term series right uh, recall in which case we can use either of these three tests let me come from the uh, last one see when you are given a series it will be something like you know summation un right understand it's a positive term series and it will be given like this when you are given summation c un look at the nth term initially after identifying whether it is positive term series or alternating series the next step is to identify the nth term from the series right we need to identify what is the nth term now see after identifying that if you understand this un as something whole to the power of n right if un has a function such that you know something whole to the power of n you may have anything here inside if you can if you can find un with this kind of expression then nth root test is the most suitable test in that case okay even such problems can be solved in other tests but nth root test is the most suitable solution most suitable method to find out the convergence whereas you see when you find un if you get un as uh, you know something like you know for example if un has these kind of expressions like you know n factorial or uh, n to the power of some finite number or you know something like x to the power of n you know if you have these kind of expression in uh, you know nth term un then ratio test is the most use most uh, you know suitable test in this in this case when your nth term in the series has you know either of these expressions then you can use what you call ratio test to find out the convergence right in simple way you see if a test cannot be solved in either of these two cases in most of the other way you can use what you call comparison test but you see to remember look at this way when un uh, for example if it has some fraction looking at the rational fu function here if the degree of denominator is more than the degree of numerator you know for example if it is something like this n divided by n plus 1 into n plus 2 see for some series if this is the nth term looking at this one can easily understand the degree of numerator is 1 but the degree of denominator is 2 right when you have these kind of expressions then comparison test is most suitable moreover you see look at the individual terms here right sometimes the degree may be also may also be similar but look at uh, individually these expressions n n plus 1 n plus 2 when these are all linear expressions see the degree of each individual term here is 1 when they are all linear expressions then also see comparison test is most suitable okay uh, if you recall what we do in comparison test to to solve a problem in comparison test we need to find out one axillary series vn right when you choose this v and you know we, we must know whether it is convergent or not already this is what you call a known series when you when you can decide a known series vn 
then we'll just define you know this limit limit n tends to infinity u what you call u n by v n is equals to some finite value which is not equals to zero right if you can get this kind of finite value then we say both v n as well as u n behave alike right so that's how you can decide whether the given series is convergent or not then when you use what you call ratio test so here we just define you know one particular limit limit n tends to infinity u n plus 1 divided by u n if you get this as you know some finite value and depending on the value you get here you see we'll decide the given series is convergent or divergent i mean if this limit is less than 1 we say the given series is convergent and if this limit l is more than 1 we say the given series is divergent and if l is equals to 1 we say the test fails in a similar way here also we'll use you know a similar limit like this limit n tends to infinity u n to the power of 1 by n right when you have this power n here and if you take the nth root of that n will be cancelled out and we'll get only a simple function and then for that if you take the limit you may get it as l again as in the case of ratio test if this l is less than 1 we say the given series is convergent and if l is greater than 1 we say the series is divergent and if l is equals to 1 it is i mean the test fails in this case so like this using either of these three techniques we decide whether the given series of positive terms is convergent or divergent now see in case when you are given an alternating series see remember when you are given an alternating series alternately you will find plus minus symbols then for example, if you are given the series as summation u n, then immediately you need to choose what you call the series with absolute terms. Series with absolute terms. In the sense, we need to take it as summation mod u n. Though some of the terms uh, in the given series are negative, still we need to take them as positive only. We take summation mod u n. After identifying this positive term series summation mod u n, again using either of these three tests, comparison or uh, ratio test or again what you call nth root test. Using either of these three will decide whether the given series is convergent or divergent. Right? We'll again see what we are doing first. The series is summation u n. Then you are taking the summation series with absolute terms. Then you are identifying whether the given series, whether this series summation mod u n is convergent or divergent using either of these three tests. In case, if you observe the given series is convergent, not the given series, this absolute term series is convergent. Then we say the given series summation u n is absolutely convergent. Right? If summation mod u n is convergent, then we say the series summation un is absolutely convergent in case if you get here uh, you know the summation mod un as divergent if you get this as what you call divergent then you see we use what you call leibniz test here here we use leibniz test and by leibniz test if you get it as convergent by Leibniz test, if you get the given series summation u n is convergent, then we decide, we say this summation u n is actually convergent but conditionally. We say it is conditionally convergent. So this is the basic idea in the case of alternating series. This is how we actually give uh, a conclusion about the given series, uh, you know, whether it is convergent or divergent. So whatever the series you are given, now let us spend a few time, I mean, some time on, uh, you know, these problems. Looking at those questions, let us identify which is the suitable technique and uh, solve it accordingly. Okay. Uh, look at the first question. Uh, take these questions onto your paper and then let us, uh, I'll allow you to unmute yourselves. You can also cooperate. You can also communicate to me so that we can identify the suitable technique and of course we can try to solve it. All right, see, I'm just moving on to the next first question. Right, see, I'm all, I've allowed you to unmute yourselves. Yeah, look at the series and uh, try to tell me what is the nth term. Anybody? 
uh, first point you know whether it is a positive term series or alternating series positive right clearly it's a positive term series good uh, then look at all the terms and try to tell me what may be the nth term right or wrong try to communicate 2n minus 2 by n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 2n minus 2 is that 2n minus 2 or anything else okay let's think of it this way you should get these things when you substitute n is equals to 1 and you know you must get all these terms when you substitute n is equals to 2 and here you know you will get these things when you substitute n is equals to 3 if you take 2n minus 2 in the numerator when you substitute n is equal to 1 we'll get it as 0 2n minus 1 sir ah see understand it this way look at all the numerators 1 3 5 probably the next term is 7 they are all odd numbers isn't it 1 3 5 7 they are all odd numbers when they are all odd numbers you must remember that comes out as 2n minus 1 right in fact you can also think it this way uh, 1 3 5 7 they are all in arithmetic progression with starting number as 1 and you know common difference as 2 so if you use this idea a plus n minus 1 a plus n minus 1 into this difference d right so the first number is 1 plus the difference is actually uh 2 so we'll get it like this you know even if you simplify this we'll get it like this 1 plus 2n minus 2 which is 2n minus 1 so when you substitute n is equal to 1 here you will get 1 then when you take n is equal to 2 we'll get 3 for n is equal to 3 we'll get it as 5 so that we got the numerator properly and if you look at the denominator you know they are like 1 2 3 3 so that you can understand it is in the nth term n into n plus 1 into n plus 3 because you see when n is equals to 1 it started with 1 when n is equals to 2 it started with 2 then for n is equal to 3 you see it's it started with 3 similarly in the nth term it should start with n only so that you know 1 increased every time 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 then 2 to 3 3 to 4 Three to four, then four to five. Similarly, here also n to n plus one, then n plus two here. Right. So that's how you can identify the nth term. Now, somebody try to tell me. Looking at this u n, uh, let me just add a few sentences while writing. Uh, you know, answer for this question in the examination. Follow some simple ideas so that you can score better marks. You should not write anything randomly. Add some masala like this. let summation un be the given series so therefore as we understood already un is equals to it is 2n minus 1 divided by n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 right so this is the nth term now can somebody tell me now what may be the a suitable series here one point you know as you told me it's a clearly positive term series so we have only three options now what are those three options uh, we may use what you call comparison test or uh, ratio test or what you call nth root test see when can we use nth root test that's idea when can we use nth root test whenever the nth term has some expression like this something whole to the power of n see we don't have any such term here when you don't have any such term here we cannot use nth root test right so nth root test is not a suitable idea so now we have only two options ratio test or what you call comparison test see to use comparison test what we expected you know degree of numerator should be less than the degree of denominator clearly degree of numerator is 1 and the degree of denominator is 3 and everywhere you see we have only linear expressions looks like you know comparison test is most suitable but remember let me also think of what you call ratio test right see let me tell you one idea here when you have all linear expressions when you have all linear expressions you know look at all these expressions individually 2n minus 1 n n plus 1 n plus 2 when you have all linear expressions like this if you if you can use uh, ratio test somebody can try it later if you use linear uh, what you call ratio test you know you will take this ratio un plus 1 by un when you use this you see certainly because all these are linear expressions when you take limit n tends to infinity to this particular ratio 
will definitely get the limit as one because whatever the coefficients you get in un plus one the same coefficients you will get in un also so that when you take the ratio you know the same coefficient divided by the same coefficient will get it as simply one that's how when every term is linear here in this expression every expression is linear here you can understand you cannot use what you call ratio test there must be different terms so that you may get different values okay so that's that's how you can understand anyway indru test is not suitable and even if you use of course you can use a ratio test i'm not saying you cannot use it if you use that you will get the limit as one so when the limit is one again you see uh, what we call we'll say ratio test fails right that's how the most suitable method here is what you call comparison test so to use comparison test we need to choose what you call one series axillary series whose convergence is already known to you then how can we how can we choose such a vn here we'll try to write somehow we'll, we may take some of the terms common from both numerator as well as the denominator but somehow we should write it as a function of what you call 1 by n if you can write this as a function of 1 by n while writing this you know you will get something as a product here right whatever the uh, you know uh, function you will get as a product to this f that you know function will take this as what you call uh, vn there right so let's try to rewrite this expression un as a function of 1 by n and from that you will identify what is vn so see to get a function of 1 by n i am trying to take n common from the numerator so what it is 2 minus 1 by n divided by in the denominator you see i am writing it as n i am not changing this but from the numerator uh, from the other term here you see we have n plus 1 right so to get something like 1 by n i am trying to take n common from this n plus 1 so that will get it as 1 plus 1 by n then even from n to n plus 2 also i am taking n common so that will get it as 1 plus 2 by n right so you can cancel this n uh, what remains then you see 1 divided by i am just writing these two terms n into n n square and if you write the remaining terms you will get them as 2 minus 1 by n divided by in the denominator you can see 1 plus 1 by n into 1 plus 2 by n right i have written these two you know ends which are in product uh, as what you call n square here then see it is just like something into a function of 1 by n so whatever the product or whatever the function you got here in product that function can be taken as what you call n square so here you can take vn is equals to what you call n square right uh, understand when you choose 1 by n square as vn selecting vn is quite simple but you know the idea is we must know whether this uh, series summation vn is convergent or not somebody tell me whether summation vn i mean summation 1 by 1 by n square is it convergent or divergent anyone convergence okay how it is convergent because p is greater than ha huh. we should write that right after identifying what is this vn we are going to use what you call p series right ha huh. so from p series summation vn or summation 1 by n square is convergent right so this is because p right you know always we take this take this as n to the power of p 1 by n power p and what is that p here in this case it is 2 since p is 2 and it is greater than 1 we will say by p series it is convergent now see this is not enough we need to evaluate one more limit now to use com com comparison test we need to take this limit limit n tends to infinity un by vn right so if you just try to evaluate it limit n tends to infinity uh, what is this un by vn look at this all this uh, product is un right when you divide all this function by vn 1 by n square you know simply 1 by n square will be cancelled out right if you divide all this product by 1 by n square simply this 1 by n square will be cancelled out correct so it comes out as only 2 yeah 2 minus i'm just writing these terms once again 
to minus 1 by n divided by 1 plus 1 by n into 1 plus 2 by n. So as n tends to infinity, clearly as we know, 1 by n, 2 by n, both approach to 0. That's how you'll get the limit as simply 2, which is finite and of course non-zero. Since this limit is finite and non-zero, we can say, therefore, by comparison test, by comparison test, we can say both summation un and summation vn behave alike, right? Uh, but already we have seen, you know, summation vn is a convergent series. Since summation vn is convergent, therefore we can say summation un is also convergent. Right? So that's how you can identify a suitable technique and then you can even solve it. Let me just add a few points here. Uh, during the last few classes, we have been observing several problems. See, in almost all the problems, uh, we, are very, we, are, we are selecting a particular method and of course we are proceeding to find out the convergence. See, we had seen some problems which involve x, right? In the series itself, we had seen, uh, you know, some kind of x, maybe some x power 2, x power 3 kind of things or x plus 1, x cube plus 1 kind of things. Somehow, we had seen terms involving x, correct? In the, in the given series. Understand, when you are given, uh, you know, a series which involves x, can we solve that problem using comparison test, right? In the practice, you see, while solving problems uh, on comparison test, we had not taken any question on, uh, you know, any question involving x, if I remember correctly, right? While solving a question involving x, see, in fact, you see in comparison test, we need to select, uh, you know, one axillary series like Vn. If you know this axillary series, then we can compare it. But when the series involves what you call x, see this kind of, uh, you know, simplification is not that easy. So in most of the cases, when the series involves x, that problem can be solved by, in case, remember, if it is a positive term series, the given series is a positive term series, and even it involves x. In such a case, many in many of the cases you know in many, so many times uh, you know from practice i'm telling you this mostly you can solve those problems by either ratio test or what you call nth root test okay when when the given series when it is positive term series and even it involves x in such a case you can solve those problems by either ratio test or comparison test, oh, sorry ratio test or nth root test right that's how you can understand when it is a problem on comparison test, mostly it doesn't involve any kind of x. Okay, so that's one idea which you can remember while, solve, while practicing the problems. Okay, now let me just ask you one more question. Uh, as I told you, you see, uh, in the examination, in the mid examination, we are expecting now four questions from unit four, right? Let us understand unit five is not included as of now. So you can expect four questions from unit four. In such a case, you can expect two questions from positive term series and two questions from alternating series, right? Recall, when it is a positive term series, we have three options. The questions, uh, I mean, uh, there may be a question on what you call uh, comparison test, or ratio test, or nth root test. Out of those three, I'm, I'm saying you will get two questions in the examination. Okay, mostly, you know, uh, we don't try to give you two questions on the same method, isn't it? Isn't it? That's how you cannot expect uh, same topic. I mean, same question uh, Question on same topic, two questions on the same topic, I mean, same method. So certainly you will get a question, uh, I mean, two questions from these three different topics. So suitably you need to identify a technique and of course you'll conclude that. Somebody is asking me uh, from chart box in comparison test, if you get the limit as zero, see what I'm saying here, limit must be finite and non-zero. What if that limit is zero? Can anybody tell me this? They do not behave alike. That's it. I mean, it means this, uh, we cannot find the convergence of this series using comparison test. We'll try it by other method or other techniques, but comparison test cannot be used in this case. If the limit is zero, right? So that's a story. 
and now let me just move on to the other one okay and one more thing remember uh, in semester examination even in the semester examination uh, definitely there will be one long answer question in the question paper sometimes there may be two also but one question is for sure and moreover you see the unit title is actually sequence and series but i have not included any question from sequences because uh, sequence is a simple topic and you can expect only kind of definitions or some or sim, uh, i mean simple problems on uh, evaluation of convergence of a sequence mostly you know in our examination probably this year we may not have any short answer type of questions in the question paper keeping that in mind you see i have not included uh, questions on sequences okay so definitely in long answer type questions you will get uh, questions on series only but remember whatever the question it is uh, these questions will be given only for five marks mostly right we cannot expect certainly what question comes in the examination so whatever the question may be they'll be only for five marks in such a case you can understand uh, when it is a long an long answer question for 10 marks definitely you can expect these questions as sub questions okay like you know if it is a second question 2a 2b kind of things right so keep that also in mind for semester examination i'm saying now look at this question right look at the question and try to identify uh, what may be the, uh, first of all is it a positive term series or uh, alternating series positive term series absolutely positive because see you are clearly given x as greater than 0 now can can somebody identify what may be uh, the nth term x power n okay by okay uh, please uh, i'm i'm just proceeding directly but don't forget to write this statement in the examination especially summation un let summation un be the given positive uh, uh, given series uh, then what is un exponent x by x power n by n okay. plus 1 root of n root n sir uh, look at the series carefully when you substitute n is equal to 1 in this we must get the first term when you substitute n is equals to 1 we should get it as 1 by 2 root 1 or see remember one more point i can tell you sometimes while identifying this un we may start uh, n from 0 this is also okay n starts from 0 to infinity or you can start n from 1 but in many of the cases you see we take n as an uh, what you call positive integer natural numbers right that's how we take n is equals to 1 usually but in some cases when it is not possible you can even start from uh, n is equals to 0 but here uh, you must tell me whether you are starting n from 0 or 1 n from 0 sir uh, but it is zero, n is only even numbers we should get ah uh, so there must be something then yes 2n minus 2 sir uh, we have done this question you know already in the uh, in the class right see if you look at all the numerators first of all you can understand it as x power 0 then x power 2 then x power 4 then x power 6 when you take n is equals to 1 it must be 0 then when you take n is equal to 2 it is 2 for n is equals to 3 it is 4 then n is equals to for n is equal to 4 it is 6 normally since these are all even numbers you must take them as some 2n right always 2n gives you even number even when you take 2n plus 2 or 2n minus 2 even these things give you what you call even numbers only when it is 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1 they are odd numbers so to get even numbers again we can take either 2n plus 2 or 2n minus 2 because we are expecting a zero when you substitute n is equals to 1 let us proceed with 2n minus 2 right if you substitute now n is equal to 1 we will get it as zero when you take n is equals to 2 we will get it as 2 then for n is equal to 3 we will get it as 4 right so keeping that in mind un in the numerator now it is x to the power of 2n minus 2 and see when n is equals to 1 you know we have 1 here then for n is equal to 2 we have root 2 then for n is equal to 3 i mean third term we have root 3 so keeping that in mind in the nth term we'll have root n and you see prior to that we have 1 more than what you have in the new uh, square root 
So here it should be n plus one. So x to the power of two n minus two divided by n plus one into root n. This is what you call n, uh, you know, u n. Now, can somebody tell me what may be the suitable test here? You should not tell me that randomly, but there must be an idea behind that. Okay, let me use this way. Uh, to use nth root test, it should be like something whole to the power of n, right? To use nth root test, we must have u n as something whole to the power of n. Do we have such an expression here? No, sir. Right? Numerator. Numerator looks okay, but the denominator has uh, no, no nothing. Uh, you know, no term as something to the power of n. So nth root test is not a suitable one. And as I told you a few minutes ago, when you when your series involves x, we cannot use comparison test. Correct? That's how the only option what you have now is ratio test. Right? You can understand it that way also. So now, since ratio test can be used, well, what can we do in ratio test? You can just think of it this way: u n plus one is what you see. If you write it, I'm just writing it for you, convenient for your convenience directly. It is x to the power of two n. You can just substitute n is equal to n plus one. You can you can verify this. X to the power of two n divided by here, you'll get it as n plus two into square root of n plus one. Then you see what you do. You will then take what you call limit n tends to infinity u n plus one divided by u n. Right? You'll just evaluate this limit. Uh, if I remember correctly, we'll get this limit as actually x square. Now see when you get this limit as x square, we'll We'll try to take three different cases. When x square is less than one, we say directly the series is convergent. When x square is more than one, we say the series is divergent. But when x square is equals to one, by ratio test we say uh, convergence cannot be concluded. Convergence cannot be given. But we'll try to take that series again when x square is equals to one. We'll just try to take it like this. If x square is equals to one, particularly. If x square is equals to one, we'll just try to rewrite the series again. So in that case, you see, we'll get u n when you substitute x square is equal to one here. We'll get u n as one divided by n plus one into root n. Right? When it is nth term after taking x square is equals to one, we need to again solve whether this series is convergent or not. Right? Ah. Uh, See to to find out whether this series summation u n after taking x square is equals to one. To find out whether this series is convergent or not, again we cannot use ratio test. We have already used ratio test. You see, this is a special case where the ratio test doesn't, uh, you know, uh, ratio test cannot be used. For that special case, if you use again ratio test, you know, you won't get anything. Again, you will get, of course, a limit as one, useless. So. Think of a test prior to that. What test you have prior to that? It is only comparison test. So when you take x square is equals to one to find out whether this is convergent or not, now use what you call comparison test. Right? Uh, what we do in comparison test? We need to write it as something into a function of one by n. So try to take n common from this n plus one. Right? When you try it, when you rewrite this, see what happens here. We can write it as One by already you are taking one n common and here is a root n. So if you write these two together, the remaining is one plus one by n. So when you multiply n and root n, it becomes one by uh, n to the power of three by two. So if you take that one by n to the power of three by two as v n, you can find out the solution. Okay, I think we have done already this in the class. Otherwise, you can refer to that uh, ratio test notes. You will find out the solution there. Okay. This is how you can solve this particular problem when it involves x. Let me just look at the other question here. Uh, look at this. Looking at that, can somebody identify what is uh, uh, nth term here? Anybody? Anybody is okay? N plus one by n plus two whole power n sir. In from zero we can take. Okay, come again. N plus one, ah. Huh? 
is uh, n plus 1 by n plus 2 mm -hmm. whole power n. Okay. n starts from zeros. Uh, one point you see when you take n is equals to 0, this whole to the power of it becomes whole to the power of 0. Then we'll get the first term as 1 actually. Yes. Uh, but the other way is you see if you just think of it this way. If you take n is equals to 1, we'll get uh, these things as okay. When you take n is equals to 1, you are getting this from this expression. When you take n is equal to 1, we'll get 2 by 3 into x. When you take n is equals to 2, you are getting this uh, term. I think we are right. Uh, we are getting correctly. Then for n is equal to 3, we are getting this. All others are okay, but uh, the problem is there with the first one. Anybody have any other idea? Any other idea? Anybody? One by two plus. Hmm. Okay. One by two plus. N plus one by n plus two whole power n x power n. Okay. See, the idea here is. Mm, somebody from the chart box, you see, they sent me this one. Let me look at uh, this one also n by n plus 1 whole to the power of n into x to the power of n minus 1. Uh, please try to tell me whether it starts uh, from 0 or 1. Definitely it should start from 1 it seems. Yeah. Um, if you take n is equals to 1 here, we'll get this as 1 by 2 whole to the power of 1 into x power 0. So you're getting cor correctly 1 by 2. All right. But when you take n is equals to 2, We'll get this as 2 by 3 whole square into x only. Looks fine. 2 by 3 whole square into x. See, we don't have any square actually. We have absolutely only 2 by 3. Okay. Right. Understand this way. We have one property, you know. We have one property, what it is. If you add or remove certain terms, some finite number of terms from the given series, if you add or remove some finite number of terms from the given series, then still this convergence of the uh, series remains the same, right? So keeping that idea in mind, if I simply ignore that first term one by two, what if I remove this term? As per the property we discussed, Removal of this first term doesn't influence the convergence of this series. Isn't it? Keeping that idea in mind, I'll simply ignore this 1 by 2 and I'll take this as the first term of the series. I mean, 2 by 3 into x itself is the first term of the series. So even if I ignore that, even if I include that, this series remains as either convergent or divergent. Earlier, if it is convergent, even after removal, it will be convergent only. Earlier, if it was uh, divergent, even after removal, it will be divergent only. Since the convergence remains the same, removal, I mean, ignoring uh, this term 1 by 2 has no influence at all. So keeping that in mind, I'll take this as un. Right? n plus 1 by n plus 2 whole to the power of n into x to the power of n. This is absolutely the nth term un, considering this 2 by 3 into x as the first term. Okay? So that's what you need to understand. Even if you remove some of the terms, definitely there will be few series. I gave you, uh, you know, some kind of practice questions uh, on one of the days. You can see in that question, you will find n greater than or equals to 2. It will be given a series. I don't remember the series exactly. But besides the series, you see, you'll find this condition n greater than or equal to 2. It means the series actually starts with n is equals to 2. And there will be some first term in the series. You need to ignore that. Whatever the nth term given in the series, that suits only when n is greater than or equal to 2. But for n is equal to 1, you see, we have some other term. That is not actually the nth, I mean, the nth term doesn't give you that as a uh, you know, general case there. Right? So anyway, even if you ignore some terms, the convergence remains the same. We can ignore this 1 by 2. And then this is exactly the nth term n plus 1 divided by n plus 2 whole to the power of n. Right? Uh, what test can be uh, taken here? What can what test may be suitable here? When the nth term is exactly like something whole to the power of n, we can understand n through test is the most suitable thing here. 
okay take uh, this n through test uh, comfortably and then find out the limit limit n tends to infinity u n whole to the power of n evaluate uh, you know how much you'll get the limit and if that limit is if that limit is less than 1 we say the series is convergent and if it is more than 1 we'll say uh, what you call the series is divergent and if it is equals to 1 we'll say uh, test fails of course when uh, if you get the limit as 1 then of course we'll use the other things see in this case when you take whole to the power of 1 by n this n will be cancelled out uh, and if you take limit n tends to infinity we'll get the limit as x right if you just evaluate we'll get this limit as actually x here so when x is less than 1 we'll say directly it is convergent and when x is greater than 1 we'll say it is uh, what you call divergent and when you take x is equals to 1 you see we take a special case we take this series when x is equals to 1 by taking x is equals to 1 we just try to rewrite it so then in that case we'll get it like this you know 1 by 2 if you take x is equal to 1 2 by 3 plus 3 by 4 whole square then plus 4 by 5 whole cube and so on now see again if you ignore this 1 by 2 you can understand the nth term un is n plus 1 divided by n plus 2 whole to the power of n right uh, somehow we need to see which which test is suitable here you can think of now because we are using initially n through test you can think of either ratio test or comparison test to give a, a conclusion about the convergence of this particular case right just you think of that uh, we just move ahead quickly uh, look at this is it a positive term series or a negative term series uh, i'm sorry not a negative term series whether it is a positive term series or an alternating series alternating so alternating yeah clearly, yeah, clearly we can find there are sign changes correct so it's an alternating series remember when it is an alternating series we always start like this initially we take it as summation un let summation un be the given series then when you are given an alternating series the second statement here in your solution must be let summation mod un be the series with absolute terms right though some of the terms here are negative we still take them as positive by taking the absolute values so therefore you can understand summation mod un is i'll just write all this series by taking only positive sign i mean like this 1 by 2 cube though it was negative earlier i'm taking it as positive now see 1 by 3 cube because you know we are taking the modulus 1 by 3 cube into 1 plus 2 then plus again 1 by 4 cube into 1 plus 2 plus 3 then plus again see i'm taking plus only 1 by 5 cube into 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus and so on so this is what you call now a positive term series because everything is positive now from this positive term series we need to decide we need to choose what you call the nth term right can somebody expect what will be the nth term here mod un is equals to uh, look at the denominators everywhere we have a cube clearly so some something like a cube comes here in the denominator uh, when n is equals to one you see we should get am i correct yeah when n is equals to one we should get what you call two here for n is equal to two we should get three then for n is equal to three we should get four so in the n plus one term we must get it as n plus one you know one more than uh, whatever the value you are taking for n is equals to n we should have n plus here n plus one so i'm taking it as n plus one whole cube in the numerator and see for this cube see the numerator in every term the numerator is one so that here also we'll get it as one by n plus one whole cube correct and then this multiplied by look at the other terms in the first term we have no, no nothing else here when, when there is nothing you can understand probably it is one so in the second term we have sum of first two terms first two integers then in the third term we have sum of first three natural numbers first three positive integers then in the fourth term you see we have sum of first four natural numbers in a similar way in the nth term we can expect a sum of first n natural numbers correct sum of first n natural numbers can be expected here so that you can understand mod un will be 
this is 1 by n plus 1 whole cube it remains as it is and sum of first n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2 so 1 n plus 1 can be cancelled out and we will get it as n, n divided by 2 into n plus 1 whole square so this is you know what you call nth term mod un in the positive term series right now from here what you need to do you see we need to verify whether this summation mod un is convergent or not right in case we can use you know what can we use here we can use either comparison test or ratio test or what you call nth root test certainly you know we cannot use what you call nth root test as you know as you don't have something whole to the power of n it looks like you know we can use what you call comparison test because when you take n common from this we'll get it as n by n square so we'll get vn as probably 1 by n that's one option otherwise you can also use a ratio test some of you can try that if you get the limit as less than one or greater than one accordingly we'll decide it in case if you get this summation mod un as convergent right in case if you get this as convergent then i'll say the given series summation un is absolutely convergent okay then in case if i get this as divergent then i'll proceed with what you call leibniz test in leibniz test if you remember we'll simply ignore the signs and we'll only test uh, those two conditions whether un plus 1 is less than un uh, and the second one limit n tends to infinity un is zero we'll just verify those two conditions and if those two conditions are satisfied then we'll say the given series is convergent if this is convergent here earlier it was divergent and after using leibniz test we identified it as convergent in such a case we'll decide then summation un right the initial series is conditionally convergent right so like this we can identify a, a suitable test and then we'll use it okay when it is an alternating series always we should take summation mod un and then using either of those three tests we'll first of all identify whether it is convergent or divergent after identifying that we'll decide whether it is absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent right so this is what we do in the case of an alternating series okay and uh, have one more question which is also what you call an alternating series if you look at this you see i'm just giving you an idea look at all these denominators they are like 3 5 7 so looking at them you can identify uh, when n is equals to 1 we are expecting a 3 here so it is 2n plus 1 right when you take n is equal to 1 2n plus 1 gives you 3 when you take n is equal to 2 we'll get 2n plus 1 as 5 so 2n plus 1 is the, in the denominator and in the numerator you see clearly they are all integers so we'll get it as x to the power of n so if it's an alternating series and moreover it is the i mean the nth term is x to the power of n by square root of 2 root uh, square root of n plus uh, 2n plus 1 so keeping those things in mind evaluate whether it is absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent right so that's uh, from my side for this